it would be a travesty if the Prime Minister is ousted by her fellow Conservatives this evening. That's according to Kent's MP Helen Grant, who says she fully backs Theresa May, who's facing a vote of no confidence. 15% of her party have submitted letters and the vote is taking place this evening. Poppy Jeffrey joins us now from Westminster. So, Poppy, what more can you tell us? Yeah, so the atmosphere here, you could cut it with a knife. Everyone's waiting on tender hooks to hear what the outcome of this vote will be. In half an hour, Conservative MPs will be heading to cast their vote on whether they want Prime Minister Theresa May to remain in power or not. Now, we've spoken to MPs across Kent today. We've heard that the majority of them are in favour of her, but that's what they're saying publicly. Obviously, this is a private vote, and we can't predict whether what they say will they will vote and what they will actually do. Um, um, will line up. Now, Helen, uh, Helen Grant from Maidstone has said that the Prime Minister, she's confident the Prime Minister will win this vote. I think she will win the vote comfortably um, and um, that will be a very good thing in my opinion. That will then um, mean that she can't be removed for, for 12 months, which will enable her and us uh, to get on and to, to deliver on Brexit, which is what we need to do. Yeah, we haven't heard from all of the MPs, though a few of them um, have been uh, have been quite quiet today. So Charlie Elphick for Dover Deal couldn't actually vote um, up until today, as he had the uh, party whip suspended 13 months ago. But a few hours ago, they overturned that, so he will actually be able to vote this evening in the uh, in the in the vote of no confidence. Craig McKinley uh, for South Thanet, meanwhile, has been uh, in court for the past few weeks on an expenses uh, election expenses trial, but at the moment. We don't know whether he will be voting at all. Um, Adam Holloway for Gravesham, however, was one of the MPs who called for the vote of no confidence, submitting a letter a few weeks ago. Um, so it is likely he will be voting against the Prime Minister. But uh, it does sound like the odds are in Theresa May's favour, although we obviously don't know which way this will go. Helen Grant said that she, um, sh she said what she thought would happen if Theresa May lost the vote. I think it would be a travesty. In fact, I can, I can see delays and possibly no Brexit at all. We've got to get it together in there. We really have. There are differences, there's some polarisation, but we have got to behave in a way that we should be as parliamentarians and, and sort this out. And to discuss this in more detail, I'm joined by our political editor, Paul Francis. So how significant is this evening? Well, the stakes couldn't be higher. On the line is Theresa May's job as leader of the Conservative Party. So you couldn't get a more dramatic few hours in, uh, in the next uh, few hours. And um, we followed on Kent tonight, uh, Craig McKinley's trial, which is ongoing. Um, will he get a vote in this? Well, the trial is uh, still sitting. The court's still sitting. There's been no verdict. So that is an open question. And in terms of um, Theresa May's leadership, what's the likelihood that she'll stay as the leader of the Conservative Party, leader of the government? Well, it depends on the margin of victory or defeat, as the case may be tonight. I think a lot of people will be poring over the numbers to see whether she's secured a significant enough margin in victory which will allow her to, to remain as leader of the Conservative Party. If she, if she falls short, uh, or if the number of the margin is not great, then there's going to be renewed questions about where where she goes. And uh, we heard yesterday that she was touring European uh, countries to try and save her deal. How how much has this impacted uh, her ability to? Well, do that? It, it does show you how fast events have been moving. That you know, yesterday we were reporting on how she was going around meeting European leaders to see if she could get some additional assurances on the uh, declaration of Brussels, as it's called. And the next day she's back in the morning waking up to the news that she's got a leadership contest. So uh, these, it's a very fast-moving situation. I see a momentous evening and we'll be following it closely here. Thank you for that, Paul.